Hello, Johnny from Eurogamer here, and welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, you may have seen before we did a video in which we found a recipe in Dishonored 2 for hagfish dumplings, and made that, or more accurately made, a bit of a mess. And this time we're doing a recipe for a horn tooth pie from Final Fantasy XV. Now, we're kind of doing this a bit differently to the way we did the Dishonored 2 video, because in Dishonored 2 we found a recipe and we had no idea how it would turn out, so we cooked it and, well, you've seen the video, hopefully. This time round, we know how it turns out, but we don't have a recipe, so I've had to write one, uh, which should be fine. Like, I'm, I've made pie fillings before, I'm pretty confident. What I've never done before is make rough puff pastry, which is what the recipe also calls for. So we're going to see how that goes. Thankfully, we're starting with the filling, so step one is get an onion and some bacon and some garlic and cut that up. In fact, I should probably talk about what we need. All right, so for this recipe, you will need, for the pastry, 250 grams of strong plain flour, 250 grams of butter, a pinch of sea salt, and about 150 milliliters of cold water. Maybe more, maybe less. Now, when it gets onto the filling, the creatures mentioned in Final Fantasy XV are a dual horn and a garalessa, which obviously don't actually exist. So I've gone for beef, and I tried to get some lamb's liver, but I couldn't find any in the shop, so I had to go for streaky, uh, for smoky, excuse me, bacon instead. So for the pie filling, you need about 400 grams of diced beef, three rashes of smoky bacon, some smoked paprika, an onion, four cloves of garlic, two beef stock cubes, 250 milliliters of beer, 250 milliliters of boiled water, and about two tablespoons of plain flour. And like I said before, step one, cut onions and garlic and bacon. Oh my. All right, next step, we have got a casserole dish with some oil heating up in there. We have chopped our onions and our bacon. The bacon's being added later on. Right now, we're just concerned with the onions and the garlic and then we'll stick that stuff in and start to sweat the onions. Alrighty, so you may have been able to see from that cloud of steam that our onions oops, are pretty well sweated now. In goes the meat, so just to remind you there's about 400 grams of diced beef and three rashes of smoky bacon. And we're going to turn the heat up under this a little bit and just zhuzh it around in the pan until the beef has started to brown. So, once everything started looking a little bit like this, your meat is kind of evenly, well, grey, and it's starting to brown, that is when you need to crumble in two beef stock cubes, and then you need to get hold of some smoked paprika and put in about two teaspoons, probably. About that and then stir to coat everything and start browning up the meat and getting sort of that smoky flavor into everything. And while that is happening, you need to boil the kettle. Damn it. <coughs> right, kettle's boiled and our meat is kind of bubbling away here in this lovely sort of gooey meat paste. Next step, you want to get some plain flour and add, mm, let's call that two tablespoons, maybe, nah, it's not two tablespoons, add, add some flour, about that much flour, and then stir it in to coat the meat, so each bit of it gets some flour over it and it starts to really thicken up. You want to get hold of about 250 milliliters of beer. I've gone for a ruby beer because it's more flavorsome and that will make everything taste better. And just start to glug that in slowly, sort of doing this by eye, so my measurements may not be too precise. There we go, that'll do. And then a bit of your boiled water from the kettle to sort of bulk it out a bit. Give everything a good stir. Make sure you get all the goo off the sides of your pan. Turn up the heat to bring it to the boil. And then we're gonna start simmering that down for ages. 
once I remember to add butter beans, because I completely forgot that butter beans are in this recipe. Bollocks. Okay, genius, now that you've remembered butter beans are in this recipe and you've drained them and washed them and managed to get butter bean juice all over yourself from the can and your cat's going nuts in the background, it's time to add these to the casserole pie meat filling-y thing. And then, the plan is we're going to let this simmer down for probably a couple of hours because it turns out making rough puff pastry is time consuming. Okay, so rough puff pastry, never done this before, but we're gonna see how it goes. You may just wanna buy puff pastry from the supermarket because frankly, that's a lot easier. But if you do wanna stick with me and do the whole hog, step one of making rough puff pastry is to cut up an entire stick of butter into little cubes. 250 grams of unsalted butter. Then 250 grams of strong plain flour. Alrighty, so once you've cut up your butter into weird looking cubes and you've weighed out your flour and added a pinch of salt to it, uh, you're meant to sift it, but I have nothing to sift with. So I'm just going to bang this straight in a bowl and hope that the consequences don't catch up with me later on. Then I'm going to add all this butter. So the next step is gently as possible trying to use our fingertips. We need to sort of mess all of these ingredients around a bit. So we've still got cubes of butter, but we're starting to get flour all up in the mix because what we're about to do is start adding cold water so we can form it into a workable dough. And I'm telling you all this up front because my hands are about to get really messy and it's gonna be hard to use the camera. All right, so I've combined my uh, ingredients for the pastry and I've made something that I'm not thrilled with, if I'm perfectly honest. I'm just gonna show you that very quickly. And I think there are probably gonna be some people who have made pastry before who are absolutely screaming at the screen right now. But nonetheless, I have a dough of sorts. I think it might work. I'm going to put that in some cling film now and chill it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. All right, so our pie filling is simmering down nicely. We've got our pastry in the fridge chilling before we start to roll it out and laminate it. So I just have time to show you a different recipe from Final Fantasy XV, flame grilled toast. Right, so our slightly sad dough has been chilling in the fridge. It's been about 20 minutes and it's time to turn it out onto a floured surface and start rolling it out with a rolling pin. Or if you're like me and realize you don't actually have a rolling pin, a nearly empty bottle of whiskey will do. Okay, so you can see here, we've got these like garish streaks in our dough. Those are streaks of butter, which are gonna be running all the way through in theory. And the next step is you take the top edge, this is gonna be difficult one-handed, and fold it down toward the bottom like you're folding up a letter. That is uneven, oh well. And then you fold the other bit up. So it makes this sort of letter shape. And then what we're gonna do is give that a quarter turn and roll it out that way and do it again. And that is called lamination. And that is the first pastry dough I have ever made. And I hope it's not crap, because we're gonna put it back in the fridge for a bit. Just wanna show you this quickly because our pie filling is very nearly done. You can see from the sides of the pan, it has simmered down an awfully long way. And so what we've got is this, which is kind of a thick gravy because you don't want this too watery, otherwise it's gonna leak straight out of your pie. So I'm gonna give this maybe two more minutes on the stove, then I'm gonna take the heat off and let it cool because ideally you want your pie contents to be cold when it goes into the pastry so it doesn't immediately melt the butter and have it go and wreck the whole thing. So, fingers crossed I can cool it down enough in time. Okay, so our pie filling is done and the oven has preheated, although uh, my oven is dreadful, so I don't have the faintest idea what temperature that is, but it's sort of hot. So, uh, we're just gonna have to go with that. But now I'm gonna roll out the pastry, put the pie filling in, assemble a couple of horn tooth pies, and then stick them in the oven and see if this whole thing will shake out okay. Okay. 
Right, so I've rolled out my pastry and if I've learned one thing, it's that, uh, well A, the bottle will leave weird marks in your pastry, but B, that's quite a lot. So I'm going to cut that into quarters. Maybe I can get a few pies out of this. That'll be fun. Yeah, let's do it into quarters and see what we can do. So we've got one of our quarters of pastry here and what I'm going to do is very simple. Just going to start putting pie filling in there. Let's put a second one in. I want to leave a little gap at the edges. Tiny, tiny bit more. There we go. Right, and now I'll just set this up. What we're going to do is grab this edge and fold it in and just pinch these edges shut to make a kind of parcel, which isn't the neatest, but is kind of how I saw them do it. Well, it's kind of how it looks in Final Fantasy XV, so <laughs> some might say I've basically made a giant Cornish pasty there. I reckon it looks exactly like a haunted pie. Here goes. Okay, so the pies have been in for like five minutes and uh, that is what I would call a disaster. Leaking butter absolutely everywhere. The edges have gone blobby. I think at this point I'm making more of a suet pudding. Oh god, steam and butter. More butter leaking. Here's what we've got. And you know what? Some fairly flaky pastry top there. I have definitely seen a worse looking pie than that. All right, it's the moment of truth. We've got a horn tooth meat pie here. Um, first time I've ever made pastry. Let's see what it's like. Is it hard to cut? Yes, it's hard to cut. That's not a good sign at all. God, this is hard one-handed. Right, looking inside, right, we've got some layers. That's pretty good. That's a bit underdone in there. But look, it's all meaty and goody and it looks, certainly looks tasty, so let's give it a go. All right, I have a mouthful of obscenely hot looking pie here, so let's see. Mmm! <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Um, the butter was uh, a bit of a disaster in the oven, it kind of leaked all the way out of the pastry, but the pastry itself. Like, that is recognisably pastry. I didn't completely bollocks it up, which is good. Probably would have got better results with store-bought stuff, so I do encourage you to um, just buy it for yourself, but the pie filling goes really well with it. It's like hot and like spicy, but smoky and meaty and good. So that, friends, was the Horntooth Pie from Final Fantasy XV. The game suggests, if you look at the picture, that you eat it with a single lettuce leaf and some cubes of tomato. Don't do that, that's rubbish. Have it with some mash and some gravy or something. And eat it with your friends before you go off gallivanting on adventures in a car, all dressed the same. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would quite like to make some more of them. So please do let me know uh, if you had fun and suggest some other recipes for me to tackle because there are loads of different food stuffs in games. And uh, so it'd be a good idea to find out which ones are your favourites. Anyway, if you did like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. But if not, there is no pressure. Just have a lovely day. Bye.